Now, we've looked at NTFS permissions, users and groups, Microsoft's AGU DLP strategy, implicit versus explicit permissions, and the accumulation thereof on the access control entries on, on a you know, DACL for an object, but that still leaves us with networking or share level permissions. And so again, I'm going to go ahead and open up Windows Explorer, and if you haven't, you want to make sure you go to folder options if you try this or try this on your own. And you want to make sure you uncheck this, use the you know sharing wizard. It does simplify sharing for the average user, but we want a little bit more control over our sharing permissions, so we want to be able to fine tune things. What that'll do is give you a separate security and sharing tab. And Windows won't, you know, it won't manage everything for you, but it'll give you a lot more capabilities. And that's what we want. So let's say we want to share these things out on a network. Now um, network permissions or share level permissions and NTFS permissions combine. And if we were just talking about NTFS, then it's cumulative. It's the most permissive set of permissions if a user is a member of multiple groups. Unless, of course, they're a member of one group, like we said, that has been explicitly denied something. It's different when you combine the NTFS and the share level permissions. With NTFS and share level permissions, a user has effectively the most restrictive combination of the two privileges. So in other words, if I were granted full access on NTFS, but I were only granted read access uh, you know, via a share level permission, then across the network, I only have read level permission. OK, now while we're on our 2008 server, let's go ahead and create some shares. And what we're going to do is we'll go to top secret, and we'll take a look at the DACL. So we have these access control entries that have our domain local groups added to the DACL. We want to provide network or share level permissions as well. So let's try a couple of things. First of all, notice that top secret access or domain local group has full permission. And if I were to log in as someone who has membership in that group, say Austin Powers, who's a member of the global group, top secret, which is a member of top secret access, a domain local group, he would have on this local machine full permission. Um, let's go and look at share per level permissions. And we'll go ahead and say share this folder. And we want to go to permissions. Let's remove the everyone group because that's not always the most secure thing to do. And then we want to add top secret access to the, in this case, so here's our, you know, share level permissions. And say we're just going to give read access. So we'll see the effective permissions here now. Um, so again, remember that top secret access is the only group now, this domain local group, with share level access. And they have read access, but they don't have full uh, control or write access. Now, if you were to look at the DACL, as far as NTFS permissions, they have the full amount of permissions there. So let's look at that across the network. And one of the things we'll do first of all, first off, is uh, let's log out. Let's log in as Austin Powers. We'll go into Top Secret. And this will be locally on our 2008 server. So uh, I have to remember Austin Powers password. Nope. That was Austin Powers password. Ah, that was Austin Powers password. We'll never know. It was a complex password. Okay. Now I'm going to go and I want to access, in this case, let's go access that folder and we'll see if we can create objects. So again, we'll go to top secret and let's see if we can make. Yes, we have local access, so I just made a folder called test. And again, let's try it from the command prompt. 
let's change the look at this a little bit so it shows up a little bit better. White background, we'll give it some black text. And we're in top secret. And we can make directories. Our directory name. We'll make a file here with the same name. Save it and there's our file testing and let's rename it. Give it a batch extension. Now that it has a batch extension, it's executable. And if we type it, we'll just echo testing one, two, three. So locally, we have full permission here. Now we've logged off of our 2008 server. Remember there, Austin Powers had full permission because all that was being processed were the local permissions, the file system permissions on that NTFS partition. And he had the appropriate access control entry in the DACL for that top secret folder. He was a member of the domain local group that had full access. And his global security group, which he's a member of, was a member of that domain local group. And that gave him full permission. So now let's log on across the network. We'll run our Vista client. And we'll see what effective permissions he has across the network. Now remember, it's the most restrictive combination. So even though he's a member of a domain local group that has full permissions at the local file system level on the 2008 server, he was only assigned read permission via the network share. So essentially, that's all he's going to have. Let's go ahead and connect there. And let's go to... Sarah, it's the name of our server. We'll just do a UNC connection there. Now let's go to top secret. And top secret is shared, but let's try to create a new object there. In this case, again, you need permission to perform this action on top secret. So we don't have permission to actually change or create anything. Let's try to delete something. I'll try to delete something here. And again, we don't have permission to delete. So let's again hop back over.